What is up YouTube? Today we're going to look at some CAD models and do some finite element analysis looking at uh, a backbone, backbone style chassis structure I made. Hopefully we can get an idea of if it's actually going to be strong enough to do any kind of motor racing. Maybe we'll build it in the future. Who knows? Check it out. So I've gone ahead and made a new backbone, carbon fiber reinforced backbone. I've been trying all different shapes in here you can see like the bottom's a little different uh, trying different shapes to just see the different distributions of force and see how they react to them so when we do this we're gonna go ahead and we gotta start by putting a constraint on it and for simplistic sake I'm just trying to look at torsional rigidity of these chassis so like if I was able to like if it was an RC car or something and I was able to just like take it in my hand and twist the chassis. How much does it twist? How much can I make it deflect? And with how much force does it require to do that? So we'll go ahead and <clears throat> lock this face here. And then we'll apply the force to the opposing end. We'll, we'll apply a, a torque to the opposing end such that we can see how it reacts to that force. So face fixed in these constraints okay flip it around we're going to look at our loads our structural load on this face I want it to be a moment basically what we're going to do here is roughly simulate you clip the curb with your front right wheel or your front left wheel and you put the whole backbone chassis into a torsional a torsional stress situation and what I've done here I've searched rough roll stiffness uh, numbers so a sports prototype like an LMP car has a roll stiffness of 1800 newton meters per degree so we applied a force of 1800 newton meters and we want to see how bad the forces are in this carbon fiber backbone component. So we just finished meshing it. You can see the mesh. So this is a what we're doing here is finite element analysis and we're going to this mesh basically creates a bunch of nodes and those are points where it's testing the force. So then we'll go ahead and solve So now the study will solve, and once it's done, we'll be able to look at the stresses within the component and have an idea of if it's actually strong enough to take the forces I'd like to see it be able to handle. Another interesting, or at least important thing to note with this model is the way Fusion 316 models carbon fiber reinforced plastic I think is based on a pretty homogeneous distribution of force throughout the material and as I understand it Fusion 360 automatically assumes that so if you had issues where you needed to create a higher ability to take load in a certain direction you totally could but it's very complex to model carbon fiber that way and I'm not even sure if Fusion 360 has the capability of doing it. As the simulation completes here we'll go ahead and look at the results and we'll talk about them. So the study is complete you can see uh, this is not it, this is not real it wouldn't twist like this this is this is extremely exaggerated so you can see what would happen I don't oh, deformation scale actual okay so if you look at the deformate so like deformation is how much the part would contort under this load so uh, if you turn the deformation scale to like what would actually happen to the part you can see that it doesn't hardly deform at all if any 
um, which is good. That's that's what we would hope. And a safety factor of 3.59 is like plenty high. So if I were to make said part here, and this is like, <laughs> um, I think it's like an inch thick carbon fiber. I, I fully expected this to be so solid that it was, you know, almost unreasonable. Uh, but I was just curious. So, but then let's look at the stress. You can see, as expected, the areas where the stresses are the highest are in the, the crosses, which would be under torsional force. And those are, these are the pieces. So like if you were to twist, you know, these outer bars, if you just look at the bar here, it, it would just twist. But these components are what stop it from being able to twist, these arms. So looking here, you can see which ones would provide strength for the model. And then this would just be the backbone. So this would essentially run between front suspension and rear suspension. And you would have, you know, wheels coming off both sides. And you could do this a lot of different ways. You could, you could have an engine mounted out here in the front. Or what I was thinking when I originally drew this was something similar to, I think the, the vehicle is called the Pavlov and they've actually got a like motorcycle engine mounted on the, what would be here in America, the passenger side. And then the driver sits hanging off this side of it. It creates a, a relatively good weight distribution and, um, and then you would have like essentially a chain drive down the middle. Good weight distribution, extremely light way of doing it and uh, probably really fun to drive. So you can also see that our stresses are extremely low. This is a very excessive part. So what I would do at this point is I would like start drawing the other components. The, the whole point of this was just to see if I could make a backbone that had the structural rigidity that I want. I want to see something somewhere between your, you know, a good sports car and, a, and an actual like LMP prototype car. All right, guys. So that was the CAD video on building a building and testing or finite element analysis uh, of a backbone chassis or just really the backbone that I designed. So hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.